Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and today I'm gonna be going on a bit of a nostalgia trip and reacting to my earliest Pokemon videos here on this channel. For those who don't know, I have been making videos on YouTube since 2009, June of 2009, so just shy of 13 years, and then just Pokemon videos since 2013. So, nine years. Here are the videos sorted by oldest to newest. Now, a lot of you know I made non-Pokemon videos quite a bit before swapping to Pokemon. A, a lot of them about a goofy fake superhero called Raccoon Man. So let's start with Pokemon Talk number one, a decade old video, oh my God. A lot of you know what Pokemon Talk is, but for those of you who started watching my content in 2020 or later, because the last Pokemon Talk episode was made in 2019, a lot of you probably don't. So this is the very first episode. I'm Bulbasaur. And I'm Squirtle. And this is Pokemon, wait. Why are you talking like that? Talking like what? That accent. Since when do you have that accent? So you can see a little bit of movement as the video goes. That's because I didn't think to just use pictures. <laughs> For most of all of the 50 something Pokemon talk episodes, I, I took pictures and then just left the static picture in place during the length of the vocal line. But originally I just recorded and was like, just kind of held it there and hoped it was long enough. <laughs> and then after that, I realized, oh, I can take screenshots after I get these segments. So I don't worry about their, if they're long enough. And then I got a nice DSLR camera. I was like, oh, I can just take the pictures. A little embarrassed at how long that took me to figure out. Also, those of you who watched later Pokemon Talk episodes know that Squirtle's voice got a lot higher. <laughs> I don't know how these things happen. Grunty Boy's voice has gotten higher too, okay? I've always had this accent. That's not true. You've always talked like, Squirtle, Squirtle. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. Yes, I have. Okay, good. You admit it. Blast, I thought that'd work. Anyways. My comedic writing's also gotten better. Because <laughs> I was a, yeah, junior in high school when I made this. We have a special guest on here today for you folks. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to... Torchic! Hi, everyone. <gasps> Squirtle? What's wrong? Wh what? What on earth is that thing? What are you talking about, Squirtle? This is Torchic. It looks like someone cut the wings off of a Pidgey and then pissed on it. I'm hearing the, uh, hold on, to properly demonstrate. I, I've gotten so much better at making videos, all these little flaws stick out to me a lot more. Like this whole time, I'm just hearing like the background noise of like the room that I recorded the vocals in, which I go to efforts to make that not the case today. Hey man. That's not cool. Squirtle, Torchic is a Pokemon just like you and me. He's the fire starter from the Hoenn region. The what region? Hoenn. How dare you call me that? That's such a stupid joke. <laughs> uh, no. Hoenn is the name of the region, just like Kanto. There are regions other than Kanto? Of course there are. Like what? Well, there's Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, and even Unova. Okay, you know I don't speak Japanese. And there's over 600 Pokemon now. 600? No, no, that can't be. There's only 150. Yeah, so over 600, because this was made prior to Gen 6. So Unova was the most recent region when I made this. I see what's going on here. Squirtle's a Gen 1-er. Okay, so Squirtle's a Gen 1-er. You can see Gen 1-er in the title. That's a very common phrase now. I made that up. The original title of the video, I changed it several years after posting it, was spelled Gen 1-ers with the number. So instead of W-U-N-N, -N, it was the number one. And I came up with that phrase, and then I started to see it elsewhere years later in memes and stuff like that. But I came up with it independently, and I don't know if this video ha played a role in the popularity of that term. Let's see if I can find like an online know your meme reference or something. Ha ha, it is I, Grunty Boy. Hey man, you doing good? Not really doing good per se, more doing weird. I've been dealing with the onset of a strange medical condition that causes me to randomly spout off about Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsor of today's video. Okay, very funny, Grunty Boy, but seriously, that's not a- Raid Shadow Legends is an incredibly fun free-to-play game where you can fight your way through epic battles and collect over 600 champions. And despite it being established as a leading mobile game, they've continued to add excellent new features over the years, such as more bosses and heroes, new factions like the Shadowkin, and the Doom Tower game mode. It keeps the game interesting and the fun constant. Grunty Boy, you're just saying these things as part of the sponsor segment. None of it is wrong, but it's definitely not a medical condition. But it's happening. 
speaking at inappropriate moments. I was at a wedding the other day and they did the whole speak now or forever holds your peace thing. And I promptly blurted out, Raid has a ton to offer overall though. Like fighting through the campaign and battling other players in the PVP arena all while collecting new awesome champions along the way. Well, on the bright side, it happened during the one part where they tell you to speak. See, that's what I'm saying, but tell that to the bride. She was very upset with it. This month, Raid is celebrating its three year anniversary with new champions and artifact sets, special events and tournaments, and personalized videos for every Raid player's journey showcasing their achievements. Yikes, this is really severe. Maybe you could fix it by intentionally finishing the talking points rather than letting it happen randomly? Hmm, okay, let me try. Scan the QR code on screen or head to the link in the description below to get Raid today. New players will get a free starter pack worth almost $40 to kickstart your game, including free champions Misericord, Tiger Soul, and Romero, plus 10 Magic, Force, and Spirit XP brews. And since it's Raid's birthday, all new and existing players get free birthday gifts worth over $25 with promo code three years Raid. Did it work? I think so. Wow, thanks, man. Now I can finally go, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, come on, ta-ta. Okay, so on Urban Dictionary, this definition was posted a couple months after my video. This was posted like a few weeks before. So there is one definition posted almost exactly the same time. Maybe I had seen it used? Okay, the Know Your Meme page says that it was created in 2012. It is uncertain when or where the term for Pokemon fans was first used. It was referenced on DeviantArt as early as March 4th, 2012. It's either possible that I saw the term once and then immediately made a video about it. I don't remember this. Or I came up with it independently just around the same time as just it was first appearing on the internet. Regardless, I'm one of the first people ever to make a piece of content about the term Gen 1 -er. Someone with like credentials to edit Know Your Meme should like include a link to the first Pokemon talk just saying because that was in April 2012. Anyways. A what? A Gen 1 -er. He's one of the Pokemon fans that refuses to accept any of the newer Pokemon and only sticks with Generation 1. Wait, so there are people out there who still think that Charizard is disobedient and that Ash is a complete dumb who won't evolve any of his Pokemon and releases a lot of Pokemon for absolutely no apparent reason? Wait, he doesn't do that anymore? Oh dear God, no wonder that boy cries himself to sleep. Gen 1ers are actually quite common. More than 75% of current teenagers are Gen 1ers. That's nonsense. <laughs> More than 75% of teenagers maybe don't play Pokemon, but that statistic is, <laughs> I, I don't believe that's true anymore. Oh, so does that mean I like youthful? Shut up, crumpet boy. Well, I've heard that- One of my friends in high school thought shut up, crumpet boy was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. So maybe I did have some comedic genius back then. But the newer Pokemon is stupid looking anyway. There are silly looking Pokemon in every generation. Have you seen Gengar? He looks like a pedophilic clown. Ooh! Are you impressed by the Cyberlink Power Director editing transition? Because I was very pleased with myself. Something called the Particle Room. It's very hard to work with and very inconsistent. Did you call me? Oh, I said you look like you're going downtown. And not like to the, to the slammer, but like the nightlife, you know? Like... Wanna make love in this club? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what I'm talking about. That's not what he- Oh! Uh, oh! Uh, you like the shoelace fine whip? Oh. Well, thank you. I actually was headed that way just now. Care to join me? Gengar, it's 11 in the morning. No clubs will be open. I... My hand, look at my hand! I don't... <laughs> He has no idea we know he takes his lunch break at Chuck E. Cheese, does he? That's weird. Yeah, we know. Anyways, Squirtle, you need to move on. There are new Pokemon now. You can't just keep living in the past. There are tons of new, cool Pokemon and places for you to experience. You just gotta get out of that Generation 1 rut and experience the new. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. I agree. Come on! Uh Wait. Really? Oh, well, great. Come on, Squirtle, let's go check out the Hoenn region. Excellent. Though, I do have one question. Brock and Misty are still around though, right? Because oh. if they're gone, then screw this whole entire thing. <laughs>
Oh, a Facebook page. Wow, yeah, I still use that. I think this episode was written during the time when the black and white anime was airing, and uh, Silent and Iris are the worst companions of the entire saga, so I think that might have inspired that joke. But yeah, that's the first Pokemon talk. I uh, think the later ones are significantly better, <laughs> but this is what started it, and this was the first ever Pokemon-specific video I ever made. And it has 2.8 million views. Oh, goodness, I didn't know it had gotten that many. But I guess it makes sense. Someone watches one Pokemon talk, and then they want to go back and watch the rest of them. All right, next we have my fake starter Pokemon. This video, what I remember the most about it was it was before <laughs> I had the ability to use custom thumbnails, so I made, like, nine different versions in an attempt to get a thumbnail that sh actually showed one of the Pokemon and not like my face. This thumbnail is a custom one. I made that later once I got it, <laughs> but it took me so long to get a good one. It was like trimming different parts. Ugh, old YouTube. Hey guys. Look at me. So youthful. No beard. I still have the ash hat. You can actually see, I think that's what it is on the bottom right there. If you guys have seen my video where I go over all the fake Pokemon I came up with, I think that's that book. But yeah, this is my room at my parents' house the summer of 2013. So right after I graduated high school, we moved immediately after graduation. And this was the room I had that summer and I had nothing to do. And I had started getting really into Pokemon YouTube content. Uh, Dookie Shed is one of the creators that really stood out to me. And so I made this video. As you've probably noticed from the title of this video, this is not going to be one of my usual Raccoon Man videos. Nope. See, this was a break from the norm. And wow, I have gotten so much better at talking on camera. <laughs> this is going to be significantly nerdier. You know, I, uh, I say that, but looking back, I think the Raccoon Man videos were definitely the nerdier ones. <laughs> I won't waste your time with a boring introduction. So here are my- <laughs> <laughs> Knowing what I know now about viewer retention strategies on YouTube, which is that you need to get to the point pretty darn quickly. The fact that I say, I won't waste your time with a boring introduction after 18 my seconds. starter Pokemon. First off, and then I don't start actually introducing one of them until 20 seconds. That's that's just funny. It could be worse. And I've definitely made videos other than this where it takes me way too darn long to get to the point. Y you learn and you grow. We have the grass type starter, Mazon. So all these were made. Oh God, what did I make? I, did I make these in paint? I drew them on paper, scanned them in, and then clearly traced over them with what looks to be some kind of paint tool. This is was not a high res. You can see the edges of the pixels. I, I might've done this in paint. I don't know what else I would've had. Maybe that's when I started using GIMP, which is I don't, despite the fact that I have a successful business, I even have an employee, I still use GIMP. I have the Adobe Creative Suite, but I've just gotten so used to GIMP that like trying to learn Photoshop, it's like, eh, that sounds like work. You can see vines coming out of his hands there. Well, if you look closely, you can see green claws coming out of his other hand, Wolverine style. Those claws cannot retract, but they can turn into vines and extend out like he's doing with his other hand. So this was uh, this was the starter that's in the book that I mentioned, the big thick book of fake Pokemon I made when I was like 13. This is the grass starter like actually from that. They use those to swing from tree to tree and its tail can grab things too. At level 16, Mazong evolves into Lizun. Lizon is still pure grass. You know, honestly, Lizon like wings when this evolved, art's not, not incredible, but used for flight yet. But they can be they could have been worse. Of time. Like Mazong, it has non-retractable claws on its hands. That can big head. Vines. Its tail is also longer now, so it can grab things farther away, just like it can with its vines. At level 36, Lizon evolves into Crizzard. Looks like a grass and flying type, doesn't it? It also looks like somebody really liked Sceptile and the Trico line in general. <laughs> Well, you're wrong. Crizzard is grass and dragon. Ah, uh, the good old days when there was no grass dragon Pokemon and I thought that was crazy spicy. And also it was originally grass flying in the, the book I made as a little kid. It's a never before seen type combination that- uh, isn't it? Isn't it fun to go back in time? Pokemon world was very different. It does make him super weak to ice, but it gives him a lot of resistances and a lot of cool new moves too as a result. Crizzard's wings are fully formed now and allow it to fly as well as it wants. Its tail now even has little fingers on it, so it can grab things even better with it. Although it doesn't use its hand vines to climb much anymore, it still has them and uses them for combat and grabbing things. Well, that's it for the grass starters. Next I just can't believe that this camera advertised itself as HD. Who in their right mind? <laughs> 
<laughs> would consider this HD. <laughs> you can see just squares on my face and hat. <laughs> Maybe I just didn't render it with a good enough bitrate, and I definitely didn't know what a bitrate was at this point in time. This is 720p? No, this is 1080p? Okay, that's what I rendered it at. The footage was not that. No one should ever consider 720p HD anymore. Maybe networks do, but on the internet, absolutely not. Next, we have the fire. So, here's the first fire starter. Raptor. If you notice some of the cuts are a little weird, that's because of the whole thing where I was like, I need a different thumbnail. I've refilmed parts of it because I like, I need this line to be shorter so I can shift the auto thumbnail to get an actual picture of a Pokemon and not me. Raptor is the first ever red fire starter. Seriously, go look at that. None of them are red. That actually remained true until earlier this year when Fue Coco was announced. Raptor is not in that big book of fake Pokemon. Uh, I made it as an even younger kid when I was like eight. And also I know it shares a name with the Uranium fan game starter, uh, completely coincidental. And I made Raptorch up when I was eight or nine years old. So I think I came up with it first. The fire on its back burns continuously, but it burns brighter when it's excited or angry and dimmer when it's sad or tired. It likes to nibble on things for fun. So be careful, those teeth are sharp. At level 16, Raptorch evolves into Velocinge. Still pure fire type, it's fire I think this one turned out pretty good. Raptors, I think Velocinge is a pretty... Is much faster and a much better hunter. I think it looks pretty cool. Level 36, Velocinge evolves into Volcaraptor. Which is also very cool. And can I just acknowledge that the names of this evolutionary line are fire, no pun intended. Raptorch, Velocinge, Volcaraptor. Like, pretty cool. Man, I scared myself with this one. Vol okay, all right. Well, that was incredibly cringe and now I hate myself. <laughs> That was quite the roller coaster. Like, I'm feeling good. This is a cool design. Wow, I scared myself with this one. <laughs> oh my god. Volcaraptor is still pure fire type. It's extremely fast, and its jaws are strong enough to rip through metal. Its backfire is much harder than its pre evolutions, but it still burns at different levels depending on its emotions. Now for the water type starters. The water type starter is Spouch. A lot of people say I don't like this one because they're like, why it's weird that it's like sentient water. I think that's cool for the record. This one was in the big book of fake Pokemon. Spouch and the evolution was Shalsh, um, but they were not starters. Spouch is basically animated water. It can shape shift to a certain degree. The end of its legs can change a bit. And when it's underwater, it is invisible except for its eyes. At level 16, Spouch evolves into Washalsh. Well, Shalsh is Isn't that water fun? Type, and like Spalsh, got the big end of arms. Its legs can shape shift. It also is invisible underwater, but it's a stronger swimmer. At level 36, well, Shalsh evolves into Glushalsh. As you can probably tell, Glushalsh is water and ice type. One thing I didn't think a whole lot about when I made this decision was the fact that this makes Krizzard like the worst one by far. Although it makes it not weak to the fire. Yeah, this 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 trio of typings would never work. It still remains invisible underwater, but the water temperature around it decreases substantially when it's present. Unlike the other two starters who are more physical attackers, Glitchalsh is more of a special attacker using moves like Sur Notice the weight? That is because so many Pokemon are made to be way lighter than they should. And this one weighs a lot because water is very heavy and frankly should probably weigh even more. Surf and Ice Beam. The ice tipped ends of its arms cannot shape shift, but the ends of its other two arms and legs still can. So there you have it, my original starter Pokemon. Which one is your favorite? Which one would you choose if it was in a game? Let me know in the comments below and keep checking back to this channel to see more Raccoon Man videos and probably some more Pokemon videos like this. <laughs> well, uh, half of that was right. Guess that's all for now, so I'll see you guys next time and don't forget, you gotta catch them all. That is the first ever time I do my stupid outro. <laughs> it all started from that and I don't fully know why I did it, but that's how it began. So now we have a big important video. My first video to ever become a real hit. How old is Ash Ketchum? 11.5 million views since July 31st, 2013. My first video to ever hit a million views and my second most viewed video up to this point. I remember that summer getting the idea to like try and analyze how old Ash Ketchum was. And over the course of the next few months, the video really took off. It was kind of a slow burn. It didn't hit a million views till December, but I think the hype with uh, X and Y coming out really helped a lot. And also the auto-picked thumbnail is great. That auto-picked thumbnail right there where you see Ash aging, 
works really well. I don't know who made that fan art and I feel kind of bad, <laughs> but that's how it worked out at the time. <laughs> I didn't use very much of it, but that is a Pokemon theme song noise that goes on for a bit. <laughs> this video has been copyright claimed, but it was like nine years after. We'll, we'll talk about that. But also, this is the origin of the Pokevids. For those of you who are watching my stuff a while ago, so the last few years, you yeah, wouldn't have seen this, but the channel's name used to be Pokevids. But before that, it was just MNJTV. So it was MNJTV, MNJTV Pokevids, MNJTV again. The Pokevids was added at the start of this video, because it was like, oh, this is the subset of my content. That's Pokemon videos. There's MJ TV, and then these are the Pokevids. And then this was like my video intro for a long time. People were like, oh, that's his channel name. And I was like, okay, I'll add the Pokevids. And then years later, I was like, okay, clearly the Pokevids is just not necessary. So I removed it. And I thought it was no big deal. And then a lot of people were like, where's the Pokevids? And I'm like, I never thought of it as the Pokevids because it's always been MNJTV to me. So we're, we're right now. Greetings, Pokefans. And that's the first ever greetings, Pokefans. That's the first one I ever say. And I don't remember why I said it, but it's stuck. Michael here. And today- I'll Oh, wait, wait, wait. I want to show that screenshot. That's me on my ninth birthday, getting my Game Boy Advance SP that I used to play Ruby, my first ever Pokemon game. That's my brother. Isn't that adorable? And today I'll be answering a question that most fans have not posed since the beginning of the anime. How old is Ash Ketchum? The reason they didn't ask it then is because at the beginning of the anime, we knew Ash was 10 years old. It states it in the first episode, and trainers start their Pokemon journeys when they turn 10. So back then, we knew the answer. However, as the series carried on, some of the older fans began to wonder, is he still 10? The anime has been around for about 16 years, and he's hey, not anymore. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Goodness, I love how I just like took pictures from various places on the internet with like no concern for watermarks. <laughs> I gotta say though, that's a pretty well-written intro to this video. You cut out the music part and it gets to the point relatively quickly. Obviously not 26, so therefore he doesn't age at the same pace we do, which makes sense since one episode a week would be one day in his life. But still, people wonder, is Ash still 10? This clip from In the Shadow of Zekrom, the first episode of the anime series in the Unova region, answers this question. Throughout this video, I use anime clips as basically evidence. This is before I fully understood like copyright, fair use, all that jazz. I maintain that this video is entirely fair use. The pieces of anime content that I use are very short and I'm like showing them as evidence and I'm like commentating on them and using them. I believe that falls into the category of fair use. Fair use isn't a super strict definition, but I believe it's fair use. And so did the YouTube copyright system until like three or four years ago when I got a copyright claim on this video and I decided not to like fight it because this video had gotten all the views it was gonna get. It has 11 million views. What is it? 11.5 million? 11.5 million views now. When that copyright claim came in, it had like 11.3. And that was like three or four years ago. So I was like, okay, yeah, you can have the ad revenue on this video. That's not like making any. <laughs> Cause I already earned basically all the ad revenue I was gonna earn on this video because I monetized my channel two or three months before I posted this video. So my timing was excellent. But because of that, all the anime clips I'm like that are in this video to be super safe, just gonna skip over them for this react video, especially in this video, because this video is actively under a copyright claim. But the, what happens inside of Pokeball 2, which there's a whole story about that video that we'll get to when we get to it. So the clip basically just says like, home to this young man, 10 year old Ash Ketchum. That's all it says. According to the writers is still 10 years old. This is evidence because he still has the physical appearance of a 10 year old. The main evidence for that is his height. He is significantly shorter than his Charizard, which- You ready for this super intense height analysis when the anime is notorious for being wildly inconsistent with Pokemon sizes? <laughs> According to the Pokedex is only five foot seven. To compare that, I'm six feet tall, so here's what I would look like next to Ash. Well, I look like Lieutenant Surge <laughs> compared to all these people who are way too short. He's also still either the same height or shorter than the girls around his age, a trait which most males no longer possess after they've hit puberty. So Ash is technically still 10. There are a few theories as to why this is even though he's been traveling for so long. The first theory is the coma theory. It states that when Ash oh, got I forgot into the I talked about the, the first episode, he actually did not go unharmed by it. 
Instead, he entered a coma. And all I the remember this old theory. Are just dreams, and all the people he meets are manifestations of his own mental characteristics. Brock is supposed to be Ash's repressed <laughs> sexuality. Okay. I put the link to the full coma theory in the description below, but there's too many flaws with it for it to actually be conceivable. Plus, this is a kid's show, and the writers wouldn't put in something that dark. The second theory has to do with Ho-Oh. The Pokedex entries for Ho-Oh, oh, Diamond, man. Pearl, Platinum, Black, White, Black 2, and White 2, all say it possesses seven colored wings, and is said that those who see Ho-Oh are promised an eternal happiness. It is suggested that for Ash, eternal happiness is always being on a Pokemon journey. Therefore, after he sees Ho-Oh, it grants Ash's subconscious wish for that and allows him to always continue on a journey, never growing older. I mean, it's a pretty good theory. It's one of those, like, OG, like, Pokemon theories, like Gengar's Clefable Shadow, Ditto's a failed clone of Mew, like, those ones that have, like, been, been on the internet for a really long time. I This is, like, the Coma Theory, I think, is one of them, and this is one of them, too. Although this one's not as well known. However, it's likely that neither of these theories are true. The reconfirmation that Ash is 10 is simply an attempt by the writers to keep Ash near the age of the target audience of the show, because unlike some other shows, classic meme, most of the people who watch the original series have outgrown it and no longer watch it. Theft for me! Woo! I, so I don't actually watch the show anymore, at least not consistently. I've seen a chunk of Journeys. Journeys is pretty decent. I never stop playing the games. The games is what I'm never, like, I don't ever foresee myself stopping playing the main series games. But the show, eh. Oh, Ash is still 10. But there's no way he realistically could have traveled through Kanto, the Orange Islands, Johto, Hoenn, the Battle Frontier, Sinnoh, and Unova in less than a year. So if the animators and writers had aged him like they should have, how old should Ash be? Well, we can find out the answer with math. <laughs> you like that? You like that visual joke? Hold on, go back, go back, go back. From the Fusion website, Ma Champ and Meowth makes math. <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with myself for that. In the original series episode, The Battle of the Badge, Ash says that it took a full year traveling through Kanto to get back to Viridian City. And then he just says it. Yet another anime clip that we're going to skip. Then later in the Pikachu short before the third Pokemon movie, Entei, Spell of the Unknown, Ash tells Pikachu that the party they've thrown is for the anniversary of the day they first met. I mean, yeah, that I basically say what it says, so, you know, another anime clip we're not gonna use the audio for. Although I gotta say, my analysis here is I'm pretty pretty pleased with myself for this. All 18-year-old Mikey. I had yet to vote in an election because I turned 18 like three weeks after the 2012 election. So it must be assumed that it is the second anniversary. So two years exactly since he first started on his journey. Each season of Pokemon, or each theme song, has- This analysis is not as strong as like actually taking like actual quotes from the anime, but I had to do something. I think I just start going into like how many episodes equals to how much time. I like create like a formula. Like how many episodes did it take to get to the one year and then to the two year and like average that or something? As one movie that goes along with it. And the third movie pairs with the first season in Johto, Johto Journeys. So if it occurred later in Johto Journeys, that means Ash entered the Indigo League, traveled the Orange Islands, and did a bit of traveling through Johto in the time span of about a year. This makes a fair amount of sense. So, as a result, Ash should be 12 at the time of the third movie. Much later, in the final episode before Ash heads off- Why does the vo vo voice sound different? Did I record this line at a separate point in time? Off to the Kanto Battle Frontier, the Scheme Team, Ash mentions that Ash, May, Max, and Brock's traveling through Hoenn had taken a few months. And then I'm sure they say it, but we're gonna skip it. We can probably estimate that to be around nine or 10. This makes sense since Ash is a more experienced trainer, he could get through a region faster. Combining that with the remaining time in Johto, which is probably about the same amount of time, maybe a month or two shorter, we can total that to about a year and a half since the third movie. So Ash should have turned 13 sometime Ooh, Well, look at that. Crisp image. <laughs> During the Hoenn region travels. We can estimate that the Battle Frontier took Ash about the same amount of time as the Orange Islands, so that would be about half a year or so. Combining that with the year and a half from the remainder of Johto and the Hoenn travels, that would be about two years since the third movie, so Ash should be 14 at the end of the Battle Frontier. The advanced generation consisted- Okay, here's where I get into episode analysis. This is one more than the Diamond and Pearl series, which had 191. Therefore, we can assume that they took about the same amount of time, a year and a few months. Therefore, at the end of Sinnoh, Ash should be 15 and a few months. 
The travels through Unova and the anime arc about N and Team Plasma totaled to 122 episodes. Yeah, I had to get into the episode analysis for the later seasons because they probably told the dub to like stop mentioning time progression. <laughs> also, I feel like this video is how I discovered Bulbapedia. I know about CRB since I was a little kid, but I think researching this is how I was introduced to it. About 70 less than the advanced and DP series. Therefore, we can assume that those took about the same amount of time as Hoenn, nine or 10 months. Since at the end of Sinnoh, Ash was 15 in a few months, he should now be a little over 16 as he heads into the Decalora Archipelago. So if the writers- Decalora Archipelago. And now he's gotta be like, what, 20? Just by being very tiny? <laughs> had aged Ash, he'd currently be 16. However, they have not, and likely will not until the very last episode of the entire series in a flash forward type thing or something. And that's because in the end, Pokemon is meant to be a kid's show for kids about 10 years old, and... What's funny is that the pictures of these kids, like, they're all adults now. Like, assuming these pictures were taken when this video came out, and they were definitely taken earlier. That, that was nine years ago. All, the, all those kids are, like, in college or graduated from college, which is crazy to think about. Are there any of you watching this video that were born after this video came out? Your birth date is in August 2013 or later? If so, hello. Be nice to your parents. They're trying their best. I hope. Parents, try your best. Enjoy your youth. Don't have a whole lot of other advice off the top of my head because I've had a weird life compared to most people. <laughs> if you want to be a YouTuber, your videos are going to be not great for a while. Guys, keep in mind, like, this video is a decent video. Decent being the operative term. Uh, this was like four years after I started making videos. <laughs> Anyways, parents, kids, be nice to each other. Try to learn about each other's perspectives and watch all my videos and subscribe to me if you haven't. <laughs> Up. So, Ash can't grow up because he has to be the same age as the new kids when they get to be that age. So officially, Ash is 10. Mathematically, he should be 16. But no matter how old he is, I'll probably keep watching the show for its badass battles and occasional funny bits. I, I didn't. <laughs> Kept playing the games though. That's all for now, Poke fans. So until next time, gotta catch them all. I did it again. This is the first video that had both the intro and the outro. Check out some of my other Oh look, there's Raccoon Man. All right, so this video was made in summer of 2013. I didn't make another video until November of the same year because I started college and that was crazy. <laughs> but I made What Happens Inside a Pokeball, which over the years passed up, how old is Ash Ketchum? By about 2 million views. Little story about this video. Back in, I wanna say 2018, maybe it was 2019, I don't remember. This video got a copyright claim. And most copyright claims on YouTube are just like, hey, the video can stay up we're just taking the ad revenue from it, which is obviously not ideal, but it's like, whatever. I, you can live with it, or you can delete the video and then like fix it. But this video got a copyright strike, which is when the company filing the copyright claim is like, we want this video taken down off YouTube. And those are really bad. I don't know if the policy has changed, but when it happened to me, the video was taken down, forced private and i got a copyright strike on my channel copyright strikes expire after i want to say like 90 days i don't remember but if you end up with three within a certain amount of time your channel gets deleted keep in mind this is 2018 or 2019 i'm full-time youtube at this point in time it's my job so my channel getting deleted would be the one of the worst things to ever happen to me and I would be in deep, deep doo-doo. If they had just taken the ad revenue, I would have been like, well, that sucks, I don't like that. But I was like genuinely very worried. But anyways, this video got a copyright claim and I submitted a counter notification. And counter notifications, if the company that filed the claim is basically like, no, then they get what they want. But if they ignore it for a certain amount of time then the claim and the strike gets released and that's what happened. I filed the counter notification. They had to respond within like, 30 or 60 days and that time went by they never said anything so the claim got released and i was like oh my god ha! so the only copyright strike i've ever had was that temporary one that's just gone now and this video despite being private for like two months has gotten views over the years i've never gotten another copyright claim on it okay here's the first video where i use this music one of my very good friends from college uh rob ez he made remixes of Pokemon music and he gave me permission to use his music, so I used that. Michael here. This is a picture from orientation week at my college where me and my very good friend Paul did a rap battle between Harry Potter and Ash Ketchum, which we had actually performed once before for a coffee house performance evening in high school. 
We went to high school together. We performed it again. Got that picture. And this was the precursor to the Ash versus Red rap battle, which is my third most viewed video of all time. And it's the same outfit, actually. My mom made that Ash Ketchum jacket for me uh, for a homecoming dance in high school. Oh, that's fun. That's Sharpie on my face. Or I understood the concept of makeup, which would have been a lot better if I had like an eyeliner pen or something. <laughs> and I'm back to answer another popular Pokemon question. What happens inside a Pokeball? More specifically, what is it like for the Pokemon inside Pokeballs? At first glance, it seems like nothing much. When a Pokemon is sent out from its Pokeball, it is released as white energy that materializes into the Pokemon. When it is returned, it is hit by a red beam of energy from the Pokeball and then becomes that energy, being absorbed back into the Pokeball. Because of these repeating depictions, many assume that Pokemon are simply converted into energy inside the Pokeball. Either that or converted to data. So like Pokeballs are USB flash drives or something. However, this theory has evidence against it. Skeptical Corfish does not approve. God, I'm so funny! The main evidence against it is the fact that Pokemon appear to be conscious inside the Pokemon. I just could not say the word conscious in this video. I don't know if my nose was stuffed up or what, but I keep saying conscience instead of conscious. Pokemon are frequently shown being able to hear commands shouted out by the trainer right before the Pokemon is sent out. Pokemon will often burst out of their Pokeball on their own usually in response to something that was said or occurred outside the Pokeball. In the new series of the anime, Pokemon XY, Pokemon are even seen moving their Pokeball in response to something the trainer says, as if to nod. No anime clips. No, I used so many of these. I, I could have just described them. The evidence for Pokemon being conscious inside the Pokeballs is this clip from the black and white episode. I, I did it again. Conscience. Jesus. Episode, the Light of Flossessi Ranch. It's actually Flockacy, I've learned. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna find the the screenshot. There it is. Yeah. So Dragonite shown chilling inside its Pokeball. Also, I like basically only use the anime for evidence of this. It's kind of funny how like my first couple pieces of really successful Pokemon content were like just about the anime. And then now I like only talk about the games. <laughs> Dragonite both responds to something said outside the Pokeball and is visually represented inside the Pokeball simply sitting there, not acting as energy. Also, Pokemon are shown repeatedly in the manga as simply being shrunken down and sitting inside the Pokeball. So, most of the evidence points to the Pokemon simply being shrunken down to fit inside the Pokeball, and then just sitting. Also, doesn't Laventin say in the start of Legends Arceus, <clears throat> excuse me, Aquus, their like instinct is to curl up, that kind of that kind of thing, right? I don't know. I would use that line as evidence if I was making this video again. I'm not gonna make it again. <laughs> I made like a sequel that like didn't do very well, so I was like, all right. In red energy is simply the process for shrinking and growing the Pokemon. This would explain why Pikachu doesn't like being inside its Pokeball in the anime. It also explains why Pokemon owned by trainers don't seem to have the need for sleep. They can simply sleep inside their Pokeball. Lucian also- What is this potato quality image? I had no concept of resolution or pixels at this point in time. <laughs> like I was like, I don't care if this image is a hundred pixels tall and this entire video is a thousand. Mentions in platinum version that Pokemon have natural instincts to curl up in order to heal. Oh, oh, I forgot he said that this early. <laughs> and Pokeballs were designed to mimic that behavior. This method does seem to be fairly inhumane though. Having Pokemon, yeah, it's fine. Pokemon shoved down into a small ball to sit there until their trainer decides to send them out? That doesn't seem fair. However, most Pokemon don't actually seem to mind being inside their Pokeball. Yeah, see, we're Pikachu fine. I refuse to feel guilt for enjoying this franchise. So, maybe that shot of Dragonite was just put in for comedic effect. Maybe it was just a silly visual representation added in to get a bit of a laugh. If that is the case, then the most likely answer is something known as the ideal environment theory. The theory oh states that yeah, the okay. The uh, this is a, this is all coming back to me. <laughs> is that Nurse Joy in that boat? How did I never notice that? Also, there's a Pikachu back there. That would not be the ideal environment for a Pikachu. Engineered to mimic the specific Pokemon's natural habitat, complete with food and perfect places to sleep and relax. There's no evidence for it, but it's nicer to think about than the alternative. That is true. It is also suggested that in addition to the natural habitat being mimicked. The Pokemon is supplied with a television, workout equipment, a shower, masseuse, training dummy, video game system, photo of the trainer, bed, and hot tub. Nice. Which is completely absurd, but it's fun to think about. 
So in the end, most of the evidence points to the Pokemon being shrunk down and sitting inside the ball. I don't know who made that fan art either, but that thumbnail also got me a lot of views, so thank you to whoever did that. And that the energy representation is the process of size changing. However, if you want to feel better about putting those digital pieces of code inside a tiny ball, just choose to believe the ideal environment theory. Then you can be jealous of the Pokemon inside the Pokemon. <laughs> I can't get over how I was just okay with these image quality. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's, the pixels are enormous. Actually, I'd rather be jealous than guilty. That's all I have for now, Poke fans. Feel free to suggest other Pokemon video ideas in the comments below, and don't forget. Look at me, outsourcing content ideas from the beginning. <laughs> you gotta catch them all. Be sure to check out my- There's a, I'm still advertising Raccoon Man videos, even though I like, I don't know if I ever made another one on this channel. I think I made one on MNJ TV Plays before it was MNJ TV Plays. I was like, I'm gonna bring these back. And I didn't do that either. <laughs> so these four were the main ones I wanted to go over, but I think we can briefly poke around to these other ones. Uncommon Pokemon Conspiracy Theories. That was another one of in similar style as Hell Does Ash Catch Him and What Happens Inside a Pokeball. I just go over some Pokemon theories. Clearly didn't perform as crazy well as the other ones. I made a, my thoughts on Twitch Plays Pokemon. And this is uh, this is my dorm room, my freshman year. Eh? And there's the old hat. This is the first video. Oh, that's right. This is the first video where I wear the hat. Hey guys, Michael here. And Wait, no, why didn't I do the greetings Poke fans? That's so weird. I thought I, I thought I was consistent with the greetings Poke fans from that point on and now my entire worldview has been altered regardless this was the first video where I wore the hat I'm pretty pleased with myself as a college freshman thinking I should have some kind of consistent branding I didn't have that exact plot but I was like I should have something that's gonna be like my thing Ooh, this hat that I kind of like that's a Montana State hat not Michigan I'm gonna wear that in this video because that way I don't have to worry about if I like how my hair looks and I can just it'll you know I could just Look, wear it it's my face also my God, those eye bags are insane. I was not getting enough sleep. Do you like my face? I mean, I do. <laughs> Looking good, handsome. But yeah, this video is a mostly like, like I, I just talked to the camera. God, I still can't believe this camera was considered HD. I just talked to it about Twitch Plays Pokemon. Who is Ash Ketchum's father? Since the beginning. Since and, uh, it's like However, the How is Ash Ketchum video, Africa, but a lot more face. Oh, no, no, an anime clip. Oh, God. Also, that thing behind me is like a wall decoration that my mom made for me when I was little. So this, isn't that cool? Do I do the greetings, Pokefans? Greetings, yes. Pokefans. Michael here. Thank God. I only strayed from the light once. I do not have that shirt anymore. The drawings on it completely disintegrated. Oh, my first trailer analysis for Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire being announced. Let's see how this goes. Got that what is that hat I'm wearing? Where's the normal hat? What am I doing? Greetings! Oh! Oh! Okay, fans. Michael here. And in case you I haven't forgot gone about this gimmick. This whole video, I swapped between a blue hat and a red shirt and a red hat and a blue shirt for Ruby and Sapphire. I totally forgot for I did that. the last few days, or you happen to live under a rock and by some miracle have found this video, it's my pleasure to inform you that Ruby and Sapphire are getting remakes that are coming out this month. I mentioned this briefly in my Twitch. Yep, that's that's the gimmick. Also, isn't my joy so beautiful? I did not get that excited about Sinnoh Remix because Owen's my favorite. <laughs> Last one, let's look at my reaction to Mega Sceptile. Because Sceptile's my favorite Pokemon. So I'm glad I got rid of it. It took me way too long to realize that I shouldn't have these lengthy multiple second intros. Anyways. So I was in the middle of editing the next video, and then this news comes out this morning, and it like... It I got the, the hat back. I'm so cute. The other one's gonna have to wait, because I have to tell you about this. I don't know why I'm so shiny, though. I didn't even write a script for this video, so it might be a little rough, but I don't care. Oh, I didn't even write a script for this video. God. Do you imagine me recording videos that I haven't scripted? Here, you have to hear about this. The new Koro Koro scans have come out, and guess what? Remember back when Pokemon news would come out in Koro Koro and not in the YouTube live streams? Weird, different times. Of the three predictions that I made in my Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire video, two of them have already been right. This is me rubbing it all in y'all faces. They have announced oh Mega Sceptile, Mega Swampert, and Mega Deancey. 
Mega Deante's typing stays the same, but its ability is still currently listed with question marks. Mega Swampert also keeps its same typing and gets the ability Swift Swim. Now get this, Mega Sceptile is Grass and Dragon type and has the ability Lightning Rod. What? That's awesome! It is difficult to disagree with that. But anyways, that's where I'm gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching and coming on this nostalgia trip with me. And an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me the same way, the link's in the description below. If you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big events. Gotta catch them all.